Hello students, welcome to Vedil Vagupare. Uh, in this video, we are going to see about uh, solutions lesson, very specially Henry's law, application of Henry's law in soft drinks or beverages. So I would like to introduce you to two different kinds of soft drinks of uh, PepsiCo. One is the Nitro Pepsi and uh, another one is the normal uh, Pepsi. So in both these, uh, the, you see the foam on top, the, the foam on Nitro Pepsi is very fine and is frothy. Whereas uh, the foam on top of uh, the normal Pepsi is uh, not as frothy as the Nitro. And at the same time, it is lesser. Uh, so this uh, particular uh, concept, what we see here is actually infusion of carbon dioxide and infusion of nitrogen gas. So the Nitro Pepsi has nitrogen infused into the water that is the sugary solution. Whereas in case of the normal Pepsi, we all know it is carbon dioxide that is infused into the water. So here what we are going to talk about is the solubility of gases in a liquid. And uh, the principle which is uh, spoken of in this particular case is the Henry's law. So Henry's law is the basis on which these soft drink companies use uh, the technique of infusing gases into liquids so that they, they are used by common people to, uh, you know, to drink uh, or take uh, uh, these uh, beverages as per their choices. So um, let us go into the topic of carbonation. So what is this carbonation? How is this carbonation or nitration done on uh, the water pump on water? So we all know when we open a cap of a Coke or a Pepsi or any carbonated beverage, there is froth that comes out or a gas comes out of it. And this is nothing but the carbon dioxide gas. So this carbon dioxide gas is infused or dissolved in the water molecule. So the degree of carbonation in this, how much amount of carbonation is dissolved into water uh, can be very easily uh, found out by us when we open the lid. So when we, uh, we all know when we open the lid, there's a lot of froth coming out. But when you shake it or when you are uh, giving any physical stress to the bottle and then when you open it, you know the froth comes out very much higher. So all of these are nothing but uh, the effect of pressure. And at the same time, when you see our cold beverages, uh, they are uh, preferably uh, served cold rather they are not served at room temperature and of course we cannot heat them and we wouldn't want to have them as hot beverages so the reason why these beverages are you know preserved under cold condition and served under cold is also uh, based on henry's law uh, that uh, the, the temperature and pressure are very important for the solubility of these gases in this water or any solution which they are taking so now moving over to the factors like i told you there are two factors one is the pressure another one is the temperature so that is the reason why uh, we see the soft drinks being stored under cold conditions refrigeration and at the same time uh, the pressure is also important so the degree of carbonization that is how much amount of carbon dioxide you want how much amount of fizz you want to your carbon to your uh, carbonated drink depends upon the pressure under which the carbonation is done and of course the solubility and that is the reason why when you keep these opened uh, soft drinks at room temperature very soon you will see the uh, drink going flat in the sense there is no uh, fizz in it or there is no carbonation in it and that is because of the differential temperature which influences the solubility so as the temperature is increased the dissolved uh, gases are uh, ejected out of the liquid and at the same time the degree of dissolution also is dependent on the different kinds of gases we will see in future so based on this application we will now see the principle or the law uh, which governs these uh, applications so that is the henry's law so henry's law is very simple and straightforward 
uh, it just talks about dissolution of gases so in this particular example we see here um, uh, there are uh, three uh, containers and all of these containers are sealed containers so when you talk about sealed we are we cannot we are not talking about open containers but they are closed containers so in a closed container when you have a liquid and if that liquid has a gas above its surface the proportion or the pressure of the gas exerted on the liquid uh, is the one which influences the solubility of that gas in that particular liquid so the uh, the uh, at atmospheric pressure or at normal conditions there is some level of pressure exerted by this gas which favors it to be soluble in the liquid which, which is what we say uh, uh, that happens under normal conditions on the water bodies or lakes or rivers or the seas uh, because we have air above us and then uh, the uh, proportion of gases in the air is different and this proportion um, influences the proportion of water solubility and at the same time the ability of the gas to be soluble in water is also another factor now that we are having a closed container of course uh, there is a pro there is a pa partial pressure or this is called as the partial in the sense it is a mixture of gases that is there in the atmosphere but each gas is exerting its own characteristic pressure on the liquid and so because it is one of the many gases the pressure exerted by the gas is called as partial pressure so now if you see the other two containers that are presented here the increase in temperature favors more solubility uh, till there is an equilibrium that is achieved so in the sense uh, the increase in solubility happens so as to balance the equilibrium as per lee chatelier's principle so what we see by henry's law is a simple relationship between the partial pressure of the gas and the solubility of the gas so if the partial pressure of the gas is high then the solubility will be more so it is directly proportional to the solubility so if we increase the pressure the solubility will also increase so here uh, as i told you p stands for pressure and sg stands for the solubility of the gas so henry's law actually deals with solubility of gases in a liquid so now the proportionality constant is replaced by a uh, sorry the proportionality symbol is replaced by a proportionality constant and uh, this is called as the henry's constant and this henry's law constant is very significant each gas ha has its own characteristic henry's law constant and uh, we can also relate solubility instead of solubility we can also use other terms like amount of the substance we can tell about in terms of the mole fraction of the substance so all of these are relatable terms which can be substituted and used to find out the partial pressure of the gas so in this case if i am substituting solubility with mole fraction then partial pressure of the gas is equal to the henry's law constant into the mole fraction of the gas what is mole fraction it is the proportion of the gas that is uh, there and ha in solution okay so the proportion of the gas in solution is dependent on the pressure of the gas above the solution so now let's uh, take a look at the example with a problem so here what i have shown is an example of the carbonated drink so here carbon dioxide is dissolved in 500 ml of uh, lime soda under a pressure of 3.8 atmosphere and then the henry's constant of carbon dioxide is also given here so as i told you the amount what is asked what is the mass of carbon dioxide that is dissolved so how much amount of carbon dioxide is dissolved is in question so the mass the mass can be calculated from uh, the formulas but then what is our henry's law henry's law is actually the amount of carbon dioxide is equal to the henry's constant into the partial pressure um here in this particular case uh, uh, the constants unit is also important so when we talk in terms of uh, uh, wolf uh, when uh, henry's law is expressed in only atmospheres or bars okay in terms of pressure term then we have our henry's law relationship which is related to the mole fraction of the gas 
okay so when we use henry's law in atmospheres or bar then it is a mole fraction of the gas here the henry's law is uh, uh, shows uh, the mole fraction sorry the henry's constant is expressed in terms of uh, mo molarities per atmosphere so that is the reason why this relationship is used okay so the value of henry's constant and the units of henry's constant is very crucial for us to write this relationship so in this particular example amount of carbon dioxide is equal to kh into partial pressure so if it was a mole fraction and k was expressed in atmospheres then we would have used this relationship okay so please don't get confused uh, with the relationship the relationship terms are dependent on the uh, units of the henry's constant so i'll give you the various units in the next slide so for now let us just see the uh, formula and then how we can calculate the mass so now we know number of moles of uh, the substances given weight by the molecular weight so the given weight is what is asked okay in this question given weight is what is asked and we know the molecular weight of carbon dioxide so therefore the given weight or the mass of carbon dioxide is nothing but number of moles into molecular weight which is around uh, 5.5 grams in 1 liter but then the question says how much in 500 ml so that divided by 2 is the answer so so many grams of carbon dioxide is actually dissolved in uh, 500 ml of the lemon soda so this is what i told you so the henry's law constant can be expressed in various uh, units so according to the various units uh, we will have to substitute the or use the relationship so if you use a wrong relationship you won't get the answer the answer will be wrong so now let us see the comparison of the three major gases that are there in the atmosphere and which is needed for us as human beings the first is the oxygen then nitrogen and then carbon dioxide so uh, we all know nitrogen is the major component of the atmosphere 80% of the atmosphere is around 75% of the atmosphere is nitrogen so but then when we talk about the solubility of these gases in water we see uh, nitrogen uh, has a high k value oxygen has the next and then carbon dioxide one point to note is because the k value is uh, a constant and then in this relationship we can see very clear, very clearly if the k value is less then the solubility will be high because they are inversely proportional if you see the solubility or the concentration of the gas is inversely proportional to the k value so if the solubility is high k value will be low so when you see in these examples carbon dioxide has a low k value whereas nitrogen has the highest k value so it is very clearly seen carbon dioxide has a very high solubility in water and nitrogen has the least solubility in water at room temperature that is at one atmosphere so this is what we see in nature also oxygen is also having a fairly less solubility in water than compared to carbon dioxide this phenomenon or this ability of the gases solubility at atmospheric conditions is uh, one which is exploited in our uh, carbonated drinks so here u is constant so now we will go back to our example which we started up so we know uh, we have uh, nitropepsy and regular pepsi in nitropepsy you see a lot of froth which is nitrogen gas and as you saw now in this previous example nitrogen has a lesser solubility at room temperature when compared to carbon dioxide so when you uh, open a nitrogen uh, uh, infused uh, cola bottle uh, the amount of froth that comes out or the amount of nitrogen gas that is released out will be far higher than the amount of carbon dioxide that is released out and that is why you get more of a froth on the surface of the liquid when compared to carbon dioxide okay at the same pressure that we have applied and then the uh, this uh, you know behavior brings about uh, a feeling of uh, you know having more froth or less froth so people who prefer more frothy liquid uh, would uh, preferably take uh, nitropepsi 
whereas uh, less frothy liquid people will take it. So this uh, uh, mechanism or this technology of infusing nitrogen in beverages started with the cold coffees wherein you need you, you people like more froth on cold coffees and now it is being ex uh, explored in soft beverages soft drinks also so uh, this is uh, the reason why uh, we see uh, more froth on nitro pepsi than in regular pepsi so this mechanism or uh, phenomenon that we see here is based on henry's law of solubility of gases so nitrogen is less soluble uh, at room temperature than carbon dioxide and so uh, when the pressure is released the solubility of the gas uh, decreases and so the gases come out of the liquid and this is the mechanism by which we see carbonation of soft drinks being done thank you